Good morning, Nick Tamble here with HG Vids. About three years ago, I did a PVC greenhouse construction video and I had no idea that it was gonna go viral, but it did. It has about 1.2 million views to date and it is one of the most popular uh, PVC construction videos uh, on YouTube right now. So what we're doing today is we're gonna uh, construct another one this time it's going to be a little bit smaller. I'm going to try to document it a little better and uh, hold my phone the right way. Last, last time I had my camera in portrait mode and I've received perpetual ridicule about the way I held my, my camera. So I'll alleviate that on this one. So the idea is to create a economical uh, structure that somebody can put in their backyard or use it for commercial use if they want to and uh, the goal is to do it in one day with about three hundred dollars in materials so we're gonna get cracking all right not sure I mentioned it's February 28th in Minnesota it's another very unseasonably warm winter normally we'd have snowpack on the ground but uh, again to get things started I'm gonna show you some staging that we've done these uh, two by fours are gonna be used to support the leg length of the base piece in the ground and provide us a level. There's all of our PVC and some more boards for the frame and tools there. This is our setup to be installing the PVC. You can see we have cross pieces and tees as well as the PVC cement. Over here we have some of the rebar and fasteners, nail plates to connect the 2x4s and some screws. So what we're going to be starting with here is base prep for the garden bed. This was an existing garden. We just need to modify the edges so that we can get our footprint for the greenhouse with having, without having to mess with grass. So I'll show you how we'd set the, the nails up here to give us a a rough idea on the base but in line with this one is down where Anthony is so you can see we have a little slop with our grass so what we can do is just cut that out with a flat shovel if you're doing an entire garden you may want to use a, a different tool we have a little manual sod cutter as well makes things go a lot faster if you have bigger machinery you could certainly use the blade of a bobcat or something like that and get it done much faster but we just have a little touch up to do with the sod cutter here so that line will be done we'll rake our edges and uh, we have this garden bed here is raised up about six eight inches so the outside edges we shave down so that the base of our greenhouse is as low as possible Something else to really think about, which should be a no-brainer if you're a gardener, is this is south. So our direct exposure for sun is going to be on the bigger side of our structure. All right, we're starting this project around 10.30 in the morning. As you can see, we got these lines cleaned up and shaved down. We did measure 12 by 24 on the four corners. What we're doing right now is just stringing this up to give us a, a guideline for when we have the the frame set to make sure that you know we have uh, the ground dug out. May need to trim a little bit more on this line. It's a little higher here than it is there. Uh, this garden also had a hose for irrigation ran to the spigot on the back side of their house over there so this is where our water source is going to come up and we have a little idea we're going to play with to uh, get some overhead irrigation in this greenhouse structure as well we have a little wood cutting station set up in the back of the truck here we basically have scrap boards we purchased a few new ones but these are the six foot cut pieces for the ends and then we'll patch in the rest to make the 24 foot sides.
To fasten our boards together, we have nail plates here to span the, you know, the gap between these boards. Obviously, you can get 12-foot lumber for the ends. Again, we're using scrap pieces, so we're tying these together, and we're certainly going to have to use the nail plates for our 24-inch sides on, on uh, two spaces each end. All right, we're framing in the corners here. Putting three inch screws on the outside edge. And we're also gonna be putting these two by four pieces in the corner here. And then our frame is going to float on this. We're gonna screw in the back side of this, the frame. And that'll allow us to level this structure here. So moving along. All right, we're framing our two by fours in the corners. This is uh, driving down. Our ground's a little bit frozen, so this isn't going as easy as we thought. But again, we're gonna screw into here, like we have already done over there. We're gonna have to cut the top of that one off. That back corner is done. So we're doing the four corners first, and then we will put pieces in right where we connected the boards on two there and two there. And then we'll get it close to level it doesn't have to be perfect but uh, we're gonna raise this side up a little bit to give us a little bit of room more room to play with with our poly piece okay our base is set I haven't checked the time what time is it this takes the longest time here it probably took us about an hour hour and a half to get this base set we've also marked these green little hash marks here that is where our rebar pieces are going to be going so it's the width of those that we're going to need to cut pvc lengths in i'll show you that in a minute but what we're doing right now is we're cutting the pvc pieces into five foot sections now you can use a chop saw if you have it this is really small thin walled stuff so you can certainly make quick work on the hacksaw as well So we got a bunch of five footers to make and then most of the other ones are going to be 40 well we're cutting these into even increments uh into three pieces so three foot four is the majority of the rest we have all the pvc pieces cut these are our five foot pieces those are our three foot four pieces and because of the frame boards that we put in we have to do one little short section short section so i have three pieces cut over there so what we're doing here with the t pieces that are being fixed right now this is the ends of the greenhouse we only need to do two of these with the t pieces the rest will be cross uh, fittings so that they all connect in the middle we have to connect four five foot pieces and then we will span those with the three foot fours and then that'll be a section so essentially we'll have two long pieces that are 20 feet long separated by three foot four at the joints One small detail is you got to make sure that you're putting these T pieces in the same direction. So that's see that one's facing that way. This is the same way. The ends do not have anything on them. That is what's going to be connected. Uh, it's going to be going into the uh, rebar that's going to be at our little hash increments here on these boards. All right, while Anthony is getting those PVC pieces connected, I'm driving the rebar at my hash marks. So I don't have a videographer here. Hold on a second. So 
I'm stubbing those up so they're above the uh, two by four is about an inch or two, a couple inches. So when we bring the PVC pieces over, it's easier to connect on top. So those are all set once we have our PVC pieces connected into each section. We'll be able to start setting the structure up. The 20 foot pieces are all assembled. Now we have one of the T pieces and a cross piece. So again, this is the end and we're connecting our three foot, four inch pieces to span them right now. So there'll be one here, one here, one here, and that'll be one section. So those will get installed individually. And once those are all up, we'll be connecting those together. And in order to leave this so that we can disassemble it, we are not going to glue, hard glue the cross piece. We're gonna put a pilot hole and drill into that so that we don't have to mess with the uh, PVC cement. We're gonna put these sections in as we go. This is a two person job, but once we have one in, this other person can get these connected over the rebar pieces, drive them down to the ground. Now, as you can see, I've already spaced out our U connectors here. So that's gonna go over this PVC and screw in to hold the um, PVC H sections onto our 2x4 base. Now things will start to move a little quicker. Alright. Fastening these is pretty easy, self-explanatory. Got inch and a quarter screws. One on one side. That's all it is for the PVC to hold there. Now theoretically something could lift this up and it would come out, but for right now that's about as sturdy as we need to have it. All right, when I spoke about make, making these H sections together, I aired. You have to make them like this so that when we put them in, we can connect them off of this one open spot without the glue and just put that in and what I'm doing here is just making a little dot to say this piece doesn't have the cement and then we'll go back in pilot hole and drill a screw right there on each one of these ends like that so this can be a one person job there down to the ground All right, halfway there, four down, four to go. All right, it's 10 minutes after two, started at 10.30. We have the skeleton structure up. Something to keep in mind, a couple little details here. This two by four piece could have been offset a little bit so we could have this PVC directly in the corner, but when we wrap our poly, that's not too bad right there. One other thing that we're noticing is we're checking our joints. You can see here we separated just a little bit right there. So as we're pilot holing, we can put a screw right there just to firm that piece up. You could screw every, every joint if you wanted to, but the ones that we've done before have held out pretty good. So there it is. That is 12 by 24. All right, now we're at the fun part. This is a 20 by 100 six mil clear roll. Go ahead and open her up. We have our tape stretched out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off 50 feet. So that gives us an extra piece of poly if we need to recover it. 
So the idea for this one, now that we haven't done it this way before, but we're going to go up, over, and down. So that's going to be 24 plus 7 on both sides. And we still have a little extra to play with on the bottom that we'll just cut off. We'll just unroll this here and we'll, we're not going to stretch it out 20 feet quite yet. We will put a scissors to it at our 50 foot mark, which is right there. All right, something critical about this poly, you know, we only have 20 foot width. So we're starting at the one foot mark on the tape and we're just verifying on this hoop where our 20 foot mark is going to be. So we're looking at 21 feet here because we used up a foot wrapping that bottom piece. And as you can see, our 21 foot mark is below our our board now we have our boards raised up here so even if they were down to the bottom we should still be good the thing is is now we have these furrowing strips that we're going to be sandwiching the poly in between the two by four and that board all right we don't have much wind today which is good we did uh, get this over the top and where we're sitting at here is about a half inch below our two by four. So again, if we did go to that, to the ground, we would be a little short. Now the remedy for that is use a two by eight instead of a two by four. That's what we did in the previous video, but we're trying to do this as economical as possible. So we're using two by fours. In another, and if we do this again, we probably would use two by eights because of the length of the poly, unless we're able to get a 24 by 100, which I know is possible, but the, the big box stores usually just sell the standard size of 20 by 100. So just to hold it in place, we got a couple clamps here. And what we'll do is staple gun. I'm on the bottom. And then what that's doing for us here is it's not letting us have anything to bite with on the tape if we wanted to tape that for reinforcement so I think what we're just going to do on this application is is just staple every every uh what are you doing every six eight inches and then we'll put our furrowing strip up against that and then screw it All right, we're at the ends here. Now, the other video I did, we did wood on the ends. Here we're doing poly. So what we're doing is stretching from the center point down and stapling. We have a lot of extra here, which we're gonna end up trimming. Now on this application, we're not gonna have a door on this far end. We're gonna probably have a window for ventilation. So uh, this end's just gonna be uh, snugged up tight. And what we have, let's grab these corners and show the slack on the corner. Now because we have a hoop house, it's, doesn't, it's not square here. So what we have is going to have a lot of excess poly on this outside edge that we're probably going to end up rolling. And that will take tie wraps and tie it to that pole. And that keeps us having one piece of poly instead of strapping one 20 foot piece on the middle and then cutting in end pieces, which I thought about doing, but I think this is better not to have a big seam on the ends so this is another little trial piece but we'll see how this goes okay our plan here you see all the slack in the corner up here there's not so much slack so what we're doing here is starting to wrap the the excess poly here we're going to put two little pinholes on here and there and then we're going to zip tie do you have it taught where you want it? Yep. Okay, go ahead. First hole in the greenhouse. Now we're going to tape over this section that we just did so that, you know, we don't make the hole any bigger. But make sure you're tight. You're kind of loose there. So 
again, this is economical. End pieces, you know, and just using the same poly piece. So we're going to do poly one, two, three, four, five or six more down the edge. It's a little warmer on this side. All right, we've secured this end with zip ties. So we have hole on both sides of this poly here. We did it, I'm cutting some of the slack off. So there is an opening in there, which we're probably gonna end up running some, probably some tape along the seam anyway. But again, this is a new try on this end. See, we have tape here. We'll do it from the inside here to reinforce those hole areas. It's, it's pretty taut in the end. All right, we're at the five hour mark and we're at the door area. Now what we found is a product that's a zipper that you can adhere to poly. It's got a sticky back on it. So we we're playing around with the idea of doing a single, which would force us to have to continually take the poly off of the sections to open it up and peel it back. So our plan right now is to put a double zipper down two sides, leave a three foot opening. We can still leave our side area secured and we just have a three foot section on the bottom that is just kind of open. So we're gonna stick these on and see how it goes. Okay, we have the zippers on. They're not totally attached up top yet. What we do here is unzip. And then now we have the poly is free, so we're going to cut a straight line right down the middle of that zipper. We'll repeat that on this side. And we'll mess around with how we're going to fix the bottom. And then we have to roll up the sides of the poly on this side and that side, zip tie that, and then we'll do some reinforcement with the tapes. After that, we will affix our furrowing strips on here. And then this greenhouse should be a wrap under six hours. I think we find that this is the biggest pain in the ass part of it right here is cinching up the poly on the side, putting pilot holes and cinching up the uh, tie wrap. As you can see it's stretching a hole right there. That's, that's about how it's good it's going to get. It's still pretty taut. So we're doing six on each side. The door's cut through. All that slack's going to get pulled up. So what we're doing here to make it a little easier so we're going to have a huge bunch of poly is he's cutting excess on the outside there right now. And then again we'll ravel it up and then repeat that process with those zip ties on the way down. All right, we just discovered a problem. When we were pulling the poly tight on this corner here, we needed to have these zippers shut because now our gap is, is too wide here, so we're gonna have to troubleshoot this. Our temperature is pretty cold and the stickiness on these zippers is certainly meant for indoor use. So what we're gonna do here is just use a regular stapler and staple that down on this side to see if we can at least make this side work and we'll worry about messing with the refab on that door in a little bit. We have the inside secured now. We averted the problem with this door. We, we stapled all along this inside of those uh, straps and then we closed it we had to take this part back up take some of the uh, tightness out of it and re uh, re zip tied that side did this side let me out might as well put them pull them both up and see how that works
And then what we have left here is to reattach from the door out, from the door out, and then the bottom portion. We have some Velcro strapping that we could put in there. Bought some uh, three quarter inch Velcro strapping that we were gonna do along the whole bottom piece, but now we don't have to. We may uh, put it in the bottom of the door or not. So getting close now. Okay, it's 4.35 and zipper doors are up. We have the bottom secured and the structure's complete. So in six hours, PVC is actually considered a high tunnel because we'll be planting into the ground. A greenhouse has benches where you're nurserying stock some people call it a greenhouse, high tunnel, hoop house. It all gets to basically the same thing. So with about 300 bucks in materials and one day with two people, we got this up. So thanks for watching. You can check out the other videos if you want to see the first one we did. It's titled PVC Greenhouse in a Day DIY. That's it for today. Hasta la chasta.